Sensations of Tone by Herman Helmholtz Part 1 On the Composition of Vibrations Upper Partial Tones and Qualities of Tone Chapter 1 On the Sensations of Sound in General Sensations result from the action of an external stimulus on the sensitive apparatus of our nerves. Sensations differ in kind, partly with the organ of sense excited, and partly with the nature of the stimulus employed. Each organ of sense produces peculiar sensations, which cannot be excited by means of any other. The eye gives sensations of light, the ear sensations of sound, the skin sensations of touch. Even when the same sunbeams which excite in the eye sensations of light impinge on the skin and excite its nerves, they are felt only as heat, not as light. In the same way, the vibration of, of elastic bodies, heard by the ear, can also be felt by the skin, but in that case produce only a whirring, fluttering sensation, not sound. The sensation of sound is therefore a species of reaction against external stimulus, peculiar to the ear, and excitable in no other organ of the body, and is completely distinct from the sensation of any other sense. As our problem is to study the laws of the sensation of hearing, our first business will be to examine how many kinds of sensation the ear can generate, and what differences in the external means of excitement or sound correspond to these differences in sensation. Correspond to these differences of sensation. The first and principal difference between various sounds experienced by our ear is that between noises and musical tones is that between noises and musical tones. The soughing, howling, and whistling of the wind, the splashing of water, the rolling and rumbling of carriages are examples of the first kind, and the tones of all musical instruments of the second. Noises and musical tones may certainly intermingle in the various degrees Noises and musical tones may certainly intermingle in very various degrees and pass insensibly into one another, but their extremes are widely separated. The nature of the difference between musical tones and noises can generally be determined by attentive aural observation without artificial assistance. We perceive we perceive that generally a noise is accompanied by a rapid alternation of different kinds of sensations of sound. Think, for example, of the rattling of a carriage over granite paving stones, the splashing or seething of a waterfall or of the waves of the sea, the rustling of leaves in a wood, In all these cases, we have rapid, irregular, but distinctly perceptible alternations of various kinds of sound, which crop up fitfully. When the wind howls, the alternation, when the wind howls, the alternation is slow. The sound slowly and gradually rises, and then falls again. It is also more or less perceptible to separate restlessly alternating sounds in case it is also more or less possible to separate restlessly alternating sounds in the case of the greater number of other noises. We shall hereafter become acquainted. We shall hereafter become acquainted with an instrument called a resonator which will materially assist the ear in making this separation. On the other hand, 
musical tone strikes the ear as perfect. On the other hand, the musical tone strikes the ear as a perfectly undisturbed uniform sound. does the difference between noise and musical tone depend? The normal and usual means of excitement for the human ear is atmospheric vibration. The irregularly alternating sensation of the ear, in the case of noises, leads us to conclude that for these, the vibration of the air must also change irregularly. For musical tones, on the other hand, we anticipate a regular motion of the air. Continuing uniformly, and in its turn excited by an equally regular motion, the sonorous body whose impulses were conducted to the ear by the air. is constantly we mean one which constantly returns to the same condition after exactly equal intervals of time. The length of the the length of the equal intervals of time between one state of motion and its next exact repetition we call the length of the oscillation, vibration or swing or the period of the motion. In what manner the moving body actually moves during one period is perfectly indifferent. As illustrations of periodical motion, take the motion of a clock pendulum, of a stone attached to a string and rolled around a circle with uniform velocity, of a hammer made to rise and fall uniformly by its connection with a water wheel. All these motions, however different be their form, are periodic in the sense here explained. The length of their periods, which in this case, which in the cases adduced, is generally from one to several seconds, is relatively long in the cases adduced. <laughs> The length of their periods which follow, the length of their periods which in the cases adduced is generally from one to several seconds is relatively long in comparison to a short Their number 
temperature may increase to several thousand in a second. Our definition of periodic motion then enables us to answer the questions proposed as follows. The sensation of 